for the sitch, let's talk about some things. Um, we're bringing in uh, the assistant professor at the University of Washington's College of Built Environments. Uh, he studies housing policy, affordable housing, and homelessness, and he is the co-author of a new book, uh, Homelessness is a Housing Problem, out now through UC Press. Please welcome Greg Colburn. Yay. Hello, hello. Hello. We've got the stand-up intro. Um, Greg, so you've got a, this is a book slash research paper, right? We can, we can buy this. Uh, you can buy it. Yeah. You can buy it right from the publisher, University of California Press, or, uh, that, that firm you were just discussing also sells it. Amazing. Yeah. Um, that's exciting. And it's, it, the title is homelessness is a housing problem, That's right. Wh which to some of us, it actually is far more controversial of a statement than I think some of us, especially who listen to this podcast, would probably imagine. Um, but what I wanted you, I wanted to ask you. So you worked with policy analyst uh, Clayton Page Aldern. What did you guys set out to do? Um, when did you start your research? Um, but what did you set out to do when it came to understanding the current state of homelessness in the United States right now? Yeah, so I, I moved to Seattle in 2017 uh, to work at the University of Washington and have been really involved in a lot of conversations in our community around housing and homelessness. And, and like LA and in New York, uh, we've got a terrible housing crisis here. Um, high rents, uh, high housing costs, and a lot of homelessness. And as I met with people throughout the community, whether it was civic leaders or elected leaders or um, analysts, advocates, my my perception was that people didn't really understand what was driving this crisis, the root cause of the crisis. And therefore our policy responses were a little bit scattershot in the sense that mm -hmm. one day we're worried about drugs, the next day we're worried about mental illness and we're worried about poverty, then we're worried about race. And certainly all these issues are really, really important. Um, but I had this hunch and began to do some research that housing costs were in, and really the accessibility of housing was the fundamental driver. And so that was my motivation. That, that knowledge was known in the academic community. There's a lot of research papers that, that people outside the academy never read that have drawn pretty convincing evidence around the relationship between housing costs and homelessness, but that has not filtered into uh, the general population. And so I wanted to write a book that was, that was sound from a methodological standpoint, but also accessible to just the average person who says, why is it so bad in LA or, or San Francisco or Seattle? And, and try to answer right. that question in, in this book. That's great. And obviously we know the right wing's answer is uh, because these are democratic cities and they just give handouts to people and whatever, you know, and there's like so many myths that you run up against and that I think you disproved in your research. Um, what are like the most common myths? I mean, I, I sort of ironically laid a couple of them out, but like how real is that idea that like, well, uh, yeah, yeah. homeless people go to cities because they get free stuff in cities or the homeless people. Cities breed homeless. Like, what is that? Democrats create homeless folks. I don't know. Like this. There's so many myths. What, what did you what do you feel like are the most common for yeah, why so homelessness exists? Yeah. Uh, so the ones we address in the book are um, we group them into a couple of categories. They're what we would call individual categories. And those would be um, poverty, um, uh, mental illness. Uh, drugs, bad luck, um, uh, and and then we talk about some community level factors, which is weather. People always tell me the weather causes homelessness, and we demonstrate right. in the book that that in fact doesn't uh, isn't the case. Um, but this idea of low income mobility and and homelessness magnets is a really powerful one, and so we spend a lot of time talking about that and use data to demonstrate that there's not disproportionate mobility um, into certain cities. There is low there is low income mobility all over the United States. People are always moving. Uh, but there is no evidence to support that people are moving to Seattle or Los Angeles because of our generous benefits. And we look at the primary federal welfare benefit uh, and look at the generosity of that and demonstrate that there is really no evidence of, of that mobility. Um, but it is a really sticky and it's, and it's frankly not just Republicans. I have a lot of, of people, friends who are who are you know left leaning who also say, well, of course, it's the weather. Of, uh, of course, it's because we have generous benefits. And um and it's just, it's not supported. So you're in other. Seattle. Let's, let's just dispel that for right now. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so now, now what I, when, but what I think is really important though, is because people say, well, you're telling me that poverty is not cause homelessness. And, and I want to say like, no, that's not the case. It's very clear that poverty is an individual cause of homelessness. Right? What we're saying is that the consequences of poverty or other vulnerabilities are different in some locations than others. Mm. So Detroit is the most impoverished city in the country. It has one fifth 
of the uh, homeless population of the high homeless coastal cities, New York, Boston, DC, Seattle, San Francisco, LA. And so it's a sort of counterintuitive point um, in the sense that they have way more poverty. Seattle, San Francisco are very affluent cities, right? When you just look at median incomes and the percentage of people below the poverty line, it's very low. So we're an affluent city. We have way more homelessness and Detroit is a relatively poor city and has, has way less homelessness. And so the point is, is that you have an interaction between individual factors and what's going on in the community. And yeah. so there is drug use all around the country. Every community has people with substance use disorders. Every community has people with mental illness. Um, and, I and when people say, well, this is clearly a drug problem, Greg, I just saw this person on the street who's addicted. I said, yes, I've seen the same people. Um, but if the opioid em epidemic is driving this crisis, why don't we have homelessness in Arkansas and in West Virginia, mm -hmm. right? Which in these communities have absolutely been ravaged by mm -hmm. opioid addiction, right? Which is a tragedy. Um, but the point is they they have a lot of problems, but one of them isn't isn't a homelessness. And so the point is that these two factors come together to reduce it. And it's just easier to figure things out when rents are 500 bucks than when they're $2,000 a month, which, yeah, you know, there's right. some basic intuition behind that. When it can't, comes to mental illness, I think that and drug addiction, like the sprawl across the United States, did you find more concentrations in places that have higher homeless populations or that didn't bear out? No, it, do, it doesn't bear out. There's actually almost no relationship between rates of mental illness and, and substance use disorders and homelessness. Um, and, you know, I actually sketched some down. Um, so California, um, Louisiana, Alaska, and Michigan have the same rates of, of substance use disorders as California. Radically different, radically different uh, rates of homelessness. Um, the highest, I just sketched these down, the highest states or the states with the highest rates of substance use disorders are Colorado, Rhode Island, Wisconsin, and North Dakota. Um, not not the the homeless hotspots that you would suggest, and so yeah. um, again, the point is when you when you layer on those vulnerabilities with housing costs, you you get homelessness. And the other thing I would say that's really important for for people, as especially if you're living on the West Coast where you see a lot of unsheltered homelessness, is um, you may confront people who are experiencing mental illness or who are addicted. And the reality is, and we know from research is that may not be the cause of their homelessness; it may be the consequence of their homelessness. Yeah. Homelessness is unbelievably traumatic. Mm. unbelievably traumatic. And I tell people, and, and this isn't a joke, that I would also medicate if I were experiencing homelessness. I mean, I come home from a you know long week at work and I have a glass of wine with my wife, right? If you are living under constant stress day after day after day, mental illness is a logical outcome. Addiction is a logical outcome as a, as a coping mechanism. And so um, I, I, it's really important for us to remember, and, and I see it all the time in Seattle, I'm downtown all the time, this may be a consequence of a, of a really mm -hmm. bad uh, experience that people are having. And so it's, um, we got to figure out how to house people. And that's going to require political change. And it's going to require resources. And if we continue to blame drugs and mental illness, we are, um, one, it's, I think it's improper because the data doesn't support it. And it's, um, and it's not going to help us fix the problem. I tell people we could treat all the, all the addiction in Seattle and we'd still have a huge homelessness problem. What's going on, Fran Tifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.